The latest on the trial of Dahlia DiPolito, woman caught on tape talking about hiring a hitman to kill her husband. She decided not to take the stand, so both sides have wrapped their cases. And Amy, uh, she may not have taken the stand, but there were some surprises. Yeah, yesterday. there were some big surprises yesterday in court as this trial comes to close. Prosecutors getting a chance to show jurors that video of DiPolito that the defense fought so hard to keep out, and then defense attorneys dropping a bombshell during closing arguments. This morning, another twist in the murder for hire trial of Dahlia DiPolito. Give her that freedom back to go home to her family and her infant son. DiPolito's lawyer revealing in court during closing arguments she has a child. As the defense rests, DiPolito choosing not to testify in her retrial. Thirty four year old DiPolito is accused of hiring an undercover officer posing as a hitman to kill her newlywed husband of six months. Is your husband Michael? Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, ma'am, he's been killed. The spotlight has now been put on this video made by the Boynton Beach Police Department, which the defense argues was staged and posted online to impress the crew of the TV show Cops and displayed a lack of integrity in the investigation, a claim the police department denies. But on Monday, the judge ruling that the infamous viral video will be shown to the jury. Because it's been a feature of the defense case, the state has the right to put that video into evidence. DiPolito's lawyers insisting the police set her up. DiPolito maintains she is innocent. This case is 100% on the egregious misconduct of the Boynton Beach Police Department and how they used Dahlia DiPolito as a pawn to generate good reality TV for the show cops. However, prosecutors arguing the video they showed speaks for itself. For 4700 bucks, she wanted two bullets put in her husband's head for nothing. And the prosecution will get a chance to give its rebuttal this morning, and then Dahlia DiPolito's fate will once again be in the hands of jurors, George. Okay, let's talk to our legal team now. Dan Abrams, Sonny Hostin, and Dan, no big surprise, no testimony. <laughs> no, because, you know, if she had testified, she'd suddenly have to explain why in the first case the defense was... I was thought I was on a reality show and I was just acting and then in this case the defense has been put the police on trial because if she had testified all of her past statements meaning including interviews with Amy uh, statements she's made in pretrial hearings all of which focused on this I was in a reality show defense would have come in and yet in this case, the defense is saying, well, you know, that's not really what we're arguing this time. What we're really arguing this time is if you want to hold the police accountable throughout this country, the Dahlia DiPolito case is the way to do it. And, <laughs> and, it's, and I, <laughs> it's rare anyway for a defendant to testify. We were sitting here uh, before coming out thinking, which defendants have testified and it's been helpful in a murder case? It's very rare. Maybe, maybe the Kennedy case, that was in a murder was case. Murder. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Slager. Because officers, when they get on the witness stand, they, they do pretty well, I think. But, but by and no large, she, ha she had no choice. It's always a gamble. The defense really fought hard against having that staged fake murder video shown. Big impact? A big, big impact. I mean, look at it. She reacts even before being told that her husband allegedly has been murdered. It's bad acting at the worst. <laughs> and then at the beginning of the video, she says, I'm 5,000% sure that I want him murdered. In order to prove that it was the police officer's fault, the police department's fault, they have to show, this defense has to show, basically that they induced her to say that, that they planted this crime in her mind. There's no evidence and, of that. And it's the defense's fault that this video's come in, right? I Meaning the process prosecution, the defense, and the judge had all agreed, all right, we're not going to introduce this video this time. But the defense then raises the issue on cross-examination of one of the police officers. And now the prosecutors say, wait a sec, if this is what you guys are going to make as the heart of your defense, we have to be able to so, present so that does, video. They open the door. Does that kill the entrapment yeah. defense? Sorry? Does that kill the entrapment defense? You know, the entrapment defense is, is not, it, you know, look, if you want to say you were entrapped, right, that's an argument you make in front of a judge to say, therefore, evidence shouldn't come in. Yes, you can make it in front of a jury, but it's nowhere near as effective to say, oh, you know, we were all kind of suckered into this situation. She's on tape saying it. It mm -hmm. is very tough to unring that bell with a jury by just saying, well, she was put in a situation where she shouldn't have been in and it's not a legally admissible situation. Yeah. That's an argument you make and for I, a judge. And I think it does kill the entrapment defense. I mean, how do you show that the police induced her, that they planted this notion of killing her husband in her mind when she says, I'm 5,000% sure I want him dead? Big plea for sympathy at the end, that revelation that she's going to have, a, that she has a son. Well, yeah, that's I mean, not going to work. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think perhaps it's sentencing. That's something that 
can be considered, but she was convicted the first time, 20 years, uh, uh, convicted, and then I think it was 20 years in, yeah. in, in prison. Uh, let's face it, I think she's going to be convicted again, maybe not 20 years, maybe 15? I don't know. I, I, think, <laughs> I think she's facing exactly the same situation. You never know, you can get one juror. Okay. That's her best Oh, hope. well, that's true. Thanks, guys. Yeah.